I recently found that I had a thermoelectric refrigerator. I totally forgot about it. We picked it up on the side of the road. It's a Black & Decker TC212FRB. It runs off 12 volts, 5 amps, or about 60 watts. But actually, it, it starts out around 4.8 amps, and it goes down to 3.5, so that's not too bad. It's actually kind of funny. I didn't know I had one of these. I was actually trying to build one from scratch. But anyway, the 40 watts that this thing takes at around like 3.5 amps or so, it's just, that's a lot of power compared to other stuff I've seen. Like, I've seen half-sized ref uh, household refrigerators that run off 20 watts. Uh, they're meant for like RVs and solar projects and whatnot. So, 40 watts for this. Uh, I sh that should be like 5 watts, maybe. So, we're going to first test it out as it is running off 12 volts and then we're going to see how, if we can uh, change it at all on the insides maybe add some better insulation and see if that will make it more efficient the ambient temperature is 78.5 degrees or so this is the cooling heat sink down here and as you can see it looks like there's the thermocouple bolted onto there thermal couple down there you can see there's a fan inside there so evidently there's a thermal couple inside of there that's pumping the heat from in here out to here through a heat sink and the fan is blowing air through the machine or through that way then in, front, in the front we have this just for holding the power cable the temperature is definitely falling now Well, the temperature got down to 28.6, and I think it's still going down a little bit, but very slowly. It's been about an hour and a half. Now, that's that's really actually too low, because that's wasting a lot of energy. This thing should stop at, like, maybe 39 degrees or so. I'm glad that it goes above and beyond what it what it's rated for. It's only rated to, to bring it down 40 degrees below uh, outside temperature, but this is actually bringing it about 50 degrees below outside temperature. Problem is though, this thing runs 24/7. It does not turn off. It just runs as much as it can. So it, it would save a lot of power if it shut off at 40 degrees or 38 degrees or whatever. Because chances are you're not gonna, not going to have to actually freeze something in here. If not, you could have a switch to turn on all the time. Now let's test it out in the refrigeration section. Because the bottom part is the is the freezing, and the top part is the refrigeration. I would assume. Let's see what temperature that goes up to. So that's only 55 degrees up there. That's too warm to be a proper refrigeration. So now let's try without the center piece. With the entire chamber open, it goes down to 34.7 degrees. Now that's not too bad, actually. And now that I'm thinking about it, it actually doesn't leak heat too bad. Not bad at all, really. Although, this material might be messing up the reading on this. It does feel a bit cool, but yet not. I don't know. So maybe it would be better just to leave the insulation like it is. Still pulling four amps, and if I bring up the power, the amps go too. That's because it's, it's just hardwired directly into the thing. It, it doesn't have any voltage regulation or whatever. Let's see if at 13.5, if that will drop the temperature lower, or if it'll go get hotter. I think it'll probably get hotter. Yeah, that's actually making it get hotter. Also, I don't want to max out my power supply. I don't want to melt that. So, let's see how long it takes for that to get up to about 65 degrees or so. 
and then we'll rip it open. Well, it's really only taken like 15 minutes to get back up in temperature. Hmm, I don't know if that's good or bad, but oh well. Let's rip it open. As you would expect, there's a pretty heavy-duty heatsink inside here. Oh, there we go. We can see inside there is the circuit board. So here's the simple little motherboard that controls the power. We have our 12 volts coming in, that goes in, and it's being sensed by this little transistor. Now this transistor is being calibrated by this little potentiometer up here. If, if the voltage in here is high enough, this transistor will turn on, and that will turn on the relay. And now you can probably adjust that voltage, that threshold voltage, by adjusting this. But to be honest, I'm not even going to mess with that. So I'm probably just going to rip all this off. Anyway, so we have the power coming through the relay and through here, and it gets to the switch. There's three positions, left, off, and right. Now one is heating, one's off, and one's cooling. On, on either left or right, heating or cooling, it puts the power to the fan in the correct polarity. But whenever it's heating, it has polarity in one direction, so it's sucking he heat from outside and putting it inside to heat up the container. And when it's on cooling, it reverses the polarity, so it's then pulling heat out of the container and making it cold on the inside. But to be honest, I really don't need these. So I can take the small wires, connect them up, And that'll control the fan. I could do the same for the other wires, and that would control the cooling, or heating, whichever direction I want to go. Oh, right, I gotta put this away. There we go. So we have the thermometer inside of there. Let's bring up the voltage to, let's say, 4 volts. Only 1.6 amps. That's not a bad temperature at all. That's after about an hour or so of sitting. Only 1.34 amps. And this heat sink, really, it still seems room temperature. Let's try almost 6 volts and see where that takes that. So 6 volts brings it down to 44-ish. It still could probably go down to like 42 or so. Let's go up to 8. And actually, I noticed that the piece that was here was actually designed to push the air through the heat sink to help it go better. It was pretty hard to get out, so I just broke off the little tabs in there. We'll see about that. That should help keep the airflow going over, uh, through the heat sink instead of just over and out this hole. That should help quite a bit. Okay, so now it's running off about 21 watts of electricity, and it's at 40.5 degrees. That's about the high end of what a refrigerator would be. 
And I haven't put in this, so I should put in the separator. We'll see how that does. So, still at about 21 watts of power. It's gone down but to below freezing. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to turn this off, though. I don't want to blow up my power supply. It's getting pretty warm. Well, now I say let's actually try to cool something down and see how much 12 watts can actually do. I have the thermometer inside of 1,000 milliliters of water inside of a boiling flask. It's reading about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll let that sit overnight and see how low 12 watts of electricity, actually a little bit less if it's at 5.9 volts, but about 12 watts of electricity can bring the temperature down of that water. If it can get down to below 42 degrees, I'd say this is a 12 watt refrigerator. Because really, 42 degrees Fahrenheit, that's plenty for beverages and drinks and stuff. So after 10 hours of being at 12 watts, it's gone down to about 49-ish degrees. And this thing is, oh, that's plenty cold. Now, I think the thing is, tw the 12-watt setting, or the 2 amps, would be good for maintaining the temperature. But I might want to build, like, a therm thermostat-type system to where first it would start off at providing, like, 3 amps or whatever, and then whenever it got down to the temperature, it would provide 2 amps. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase it to 2.5. There's about 18 watts of power going into it, and that temperature should go down a lot more. Or actually, you know what? Scratch that. I just had an idea. We'll keep it back at 12. It's kind of hovering around 48.8. And we'll disconnect. Disconnect the fan. So now the fan is not connected up. I can remove this to help airflow. That'll help to have airflow go get to the heat sink. And now with removing the fan, in order to give it 2 amps of current, it has to up, up the voltage to 6.3, so the temperature might go down even further. Because it doesn't really matter if this, is, if this heat sink is above ambient temperature, because it's really, it's only really like lukewarm even. Well, it looks like I fried it. That's weird. Usually these are rated for 180 degrees. Oh, well. That sucks. Well, I disconnected it for, for several seconds, and then I connected it back up, and I removed the water, so there's less thermal capacity in there, so it's, it's, it'll cool down quicker. And it seems like there's just like a thermal fuse inside there or something like that that tripped whenever it got too hot. So that's good. It's still working. Now... I think this is pretty much as far as I want to get today, but I'm thinking sometime in the future I might take some of these other thermoelectric coolers or Peltier coolers, and I will cut into the side. I'll cut through the foam so I can have access to the metal heat sink down here. Then I can have multiple coolers on the sides of the, of the cooler. I can have up to three of them. And then on the end of that I will put... 12 volt computer fan maybe although I will try to have just a passive heat sink because that would save electricity I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching see ya